Final topic of the day, as always, brought to you by the Kind of Funny Forums. Kind of Funny Forum hype! If you have a topic you want us to discuss on this beautiful, beautiful show, go to kindoffunny.com slash gamescast topic. Leave a post, and we'll get to it, just like we did for Jalapeno. Oh, okay. Yeah. I nah. see what he's doing there. No, it was, it was all right. I, I mean, I wasn't excited. I, was I like, actually really, really, really enjoyed this question. If you had to estimate how much money would you say you've spent on games, consoles, and DLC, how much would it be? Oh my! Are God. we counting what what our our parents spent on us? Yeah. yeah. Oh, jeez. I did, in college. I remember getting interviewed for a girl who was working on her in one of her journals. Interviewed for a girl. Getting interviewed by a girl is what I meant to say. Oh, Sorry if it. I didn't. Uh, who was in a journalism class my freshman year, and she knew I was big into video games. And it was, yeah, she I, she asked me, like, what all I had owned. And I ran her through all the systems, not every game, obviously. And she's like, does it ever boggle your mind to think about how much money you spent? And I was like, not until right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, now, now, I have no idea. I mean. I'm going to use my calculator here. Okay. <laughs> That's Because I remember I had this conversation back with my friends in high school where we'd stop. And like this was towards the tail end of like the Xbox yeah. generation. I remember looking at all my Xbox, GameCube, and PlayStation Two games. So this is just modern that generation. Sure, looking at all of them, being like, all right, fifty dollars, fifty dollars, yeah, fifty dollars, yeah, yeah, fifty dollars. Yeah. You add it up, you're like, it adds up so. Oh quickly, my god, right? this, is, this is like thousands of dollars. Yeah, how did I, I don't have thousands of dollars? This doesn't make any sense. Yeah, you know. And there's always the things where you know you got things free or you traded. Exactly. You, and that, that, you know, or, last night I was digging through. Colin introduced a new segment on PS. I love you. That's a uh, you know a. Fr- game and so i was digging through my trophy list last night and just the scroll and the scroll and the scroll and this to try to get to the bottom where it all starts with super stardust you know what i mean yeah and when you get there it's just like i, I didn't pay for all those games obviously i was working in the industry but it's just like lord almighty there's yeah. so many just there you mm-hmm. know ps3 on yeah i mean that's the thing is it's tough because from 2007 to now i mean just frankly i mean we we've not paid for a blind share of our games yeah you know so it's so the game spending has precipitously gone down since I've gone out of college. I'd say that on average I was spending between console and gaming, including the N- from NES. So NES, SNES, the PlayStation era, which would include N64, and maybe like Dreamcast and later the on. Saturn. And I didn't own a Saturn at that, you know, you lucky, during that, you lucky, that lucky era. Master. Um and then GameCube, PS2, Xbox, and then including putting in like DS. Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Game Boy. It's got to be... I mean, I have a lot of games on some of those systems. It's got to be like something like absurd, like $25,000 probably. So, I mean, I, see, like, I, I think, I, I think that, it's got to be even more than that. I think it's more than that for you. Like, knowing how many games you have... Knowing how many games I have, and only imagining how many you have on all the old systems, and in addition to how much you must have... Because you're older than me, so you you were making money during like the PS2 generation. Yeah, I, I, had, I had a job the entire PS2 generation. Yeah, so it's like you must have been buying things left and fucking right. I used to buy so many games I didn't even open half of them. So, I mean, that was the thing is that I would buy... I would make like $250 a week after taxes or whatever in high school, and then I would just buy like four games a week. Like, I would literally buy like four games a week mm-hmm. for years. Like, I, I had no intention of playing half these games. I remember buying like Red Faction and being like, I don't even know why I well, bought Well, Red this. Faction was great. It, but I was like, why <laughs> did I even buy this? Like, I remember being like, so desperate for PS2 games. I was like... Why did I buy Red Faction again? It was because that cute girl at fucking Planet Comics. Oh, um, man, but I remember she always gets. But I, I, I had like all these Dreamcast games. I remember getting even after Dreamcast was canceled or like Dumb. discontinued in two thousand one, early two thousand one. I remember getting like the Sega Smash Pack, and I go, well, I would just buy anything. So like during the so like PS one, N sixty four, PS two, Dreamcast, Xbox, GameCube. That was when I spent a lot of money. I have a lot of games on those systems, especially GameCube and PS two and PS one. N64, I probably had like 20 games. They're expensive, though. Yeah, they yeah. Were maybe a few, maybe 15. Maybe no more than that, probably. And then PS1, I feel like I had, I mean, I had a lot of games on PS1. Like dozens of games on PS1, yeah. for sure. PS2, I probably had dozens of games. I probably had like 30 GameCube games and 10 Xbox games or something like that. I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. The thing is that I have more, My the biggest question I have is PS3. I have over 100 retail PS3 games. But I don't know. I mean, to be perfectly honest with you, initially, I don't know that I paid for any more than a few of those. And I think you're probably yeah. the same. Oh, yeah, right? same way. Yeah, that's the thing out there of why that collection is so vast and into PS4 now, too. Just in the fact of, like, you know, eventually IGN changed their policy of, like, you couldn't trade in games anymore while we were there. And this is early, early, what, like, 08 when we were there? I don't remember. You? you? When, when IG, when Hillary switched the policy, he's like, don't trade anymore. 
And so, like, that's why I just have all these PS3 games. So, yeah, like... Do it. You just weren't allowed to trade it. Right. There was, there was always this... You know, when, my, when I first got to IGN, coming out of journalism school, like, it was the Wild West in terms of, like, I don't know if this is the right thing to do. And, like, as the industry grew up, ethics became a real thing. Mm. And everybody's like, this is... Eventually enough people were awake to the fact of, like, this is weird that we're getting games for review or just... Because it was, like, it used in the old days when companies had money to burn, it would be like, hey... Everyone gets a copy of game, whatever it is. And so, yeah. like, one person's reviewing and 30 people have it. And then if, you know, 29 of those people didn't care about it, they could go trade it in or whatever. Oh, I got you. So, so you trade in GameStop trade in free, or whatever. Free games you're getting. Exactly, free exactly, oh, exactly. Yeah, 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 if you yeah. bought a game, you can do whatever you want with it. Yeah, yeah, okay, cool, cool. And that so, like, sense. that's when, like, the collection just started. of just like, oh, cool. And now we're, it's the same thing, right? Now everything we get is digital, it seems. But, like, yeah. even with the PS4 and stuff, like. I mean, digital still costs money, though. That's the. Sure, the sure, sure, I mean, sure. I, yeah, I mean, between I, on PS3, retail and digital. I have to have something approaching 300, 350 games, probably. I mean, my digital, like it has my digital be, collection on all these things is insane. All of these things. You yeah, look in Vita there, too. Like, oh, I shit, have like, right. oh, I probably have most of the Vita games released mm-hmm. on retail. Or I have, even like, I virtual I have like, console on like Wii yeah. and Wii U, even. Yeah. Like, those things add up, you know? How many copies of, just thinking of how much money I put into just the Super Mario Bros. series is crazy. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I'm just bringing that up though, not to say like these are the amount of games that you bought. It's not, like this is an unrealistic amount of games that no one owns, and yeah. that that and that's Greg and I are in the so upper point one percent, and that's why it's impossible for us to quantify how right. much money exactly, we would spend. Exactly, because exactly. If I look at my shelf about the games I would have bought, it's probably ten percent of the games that I actually own. So yeah, exactly, um, maybe a little more than that, like twenty percent. But so that's why, like, we, I'm just saying that to be honest and to say like we are detached from that reality today. But yeah. there was a point in time when we were far from being detached mm-hmm. from that reality. And, and and I can sympathize with those guys that go out and be like, I don't even have time to play all the games I buy because I was like, I'm right there with you, man. Yeah. When I go through my game collection at home every few years, I go through dozens of games that are still wrapped. I'm that are like just, I don't even like... That, see, that's crazy. You know, like, that, like, no, that's you know. what I did too. And I, like, honestly, that was... I it's, it's a convoluted question because I would venture to say my Genesis collection was my biggest collection I ever had. And that was because parents would my parents would buy them. And mm. I remember I had this little cabinet that had all, like three big shelves. Oh my God. Uh, and I was a little kid, of course, so size is all fucked up. But I remember having this thing. And I remember a friend came over, one of my mom's like friends from back in high school. His She came over with her kid. And he's like, oh, you got a Genesis? You want to play something? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, what games do you have? I'm like, oh, they're in there. And he opened it up and he was like, I've never seen this many games. You know what I mean? But we were dumb kids. So then you jump for, to PS2 generation. And mm-hmm. PS2 was the first console I ever bought with my money that was like my thing. Yeah. And that was definitely the thing of like, I remember, yeah, like getting Hitman and Shadow of the Colossus, like in the same trip or whatever. And then I think I finally opened Hitman, popped it. I'm like, I don't really like this and popped it out. You know what I mean? Like you were just burning through because yeah, there were so, so many that's fucking crazy. games on that thing. It's just funny how, you know, a couple year difference in age will change so much. Like for me, PS2, I was still, I was like middle school. So yeah, yeah. that was, I didn't have my own money. So it was like, I'll me and my friends would like, Combine money and pitch and buy games together and share them and stuff yeah. like that. And no, that I was, wasn't, that I, was an event. That was like if we bought a PS2 game or GameCube game or Xbox yeah. game, that was the game we were playing for the next month. Right. Yeah. You know? No, that was PS2. Like, yeah, that came out. You know, my the what fall of my senior year. I waited in line the nine hours to get it with Adam Brown, and then I went to college and I was fucking awesome at college because I had a PS2. Not many people had those yet. You know what I mean? And that was totally the thing of like I am dying for PS2 games. Yeah, I mean it was yeah. let's it was go bad that, for that a while. pilgrim out to the Columbia Mall to go to GameStop to see what they had, walk down to Slackers and just look through the PS2 catalog on the wall and I've played most of these or I haven't and it's like buy something, bring it home, bouncer. try it. Yeah, yeah. see if it's yeah, the bouncer. Like yeah, the yeah, bouncer. yeah. Oni. I remember being Oni. Oh. fucking uh, uh, stoked for Oni. I'm like, yes, a third person action game? Hell yes, this is going to be great. <laughs> oh, that's and then you're so playing, funny. it's like, well, it's, uh, it's like Dark Angel. PS2's launch was was a good sign because I still, I still say Vita actually out of all the PlayStation devices had the best launch library. And it was because PS Vita nailed what PS2 didn't, which was PS2 was like, we just have a lot of games. I don't think there's any system that came out that had more launch games than PS2. There oh, yeah. were so many launch games that there were studios that made multiple launch games. So it was like, what the... And I remember looking at these games being like, what the fuck is all this shit? And I... I Smuggler's I remember, Run? Yeah, Phantom Smuggler's Run was fine. Good, man. I, Phantom Mission I had, Smuggler's Run was, was fine. But I remember buying... SSI. Genji or something like that and oh, being yeah. like oh my god and then I, I like br- that was when you could still bring games back yep. after you open them and I bought Summoner yep. and I was like oh my god and then it was like and then it was like Nobunaga's Ambition or some bullshit <laughs> game like that 
And I was like, Jesus Christ. For me, you know, it was, I, it I, was, remember, I remember being like, what the fuck am I supposed to play on this I talked on this myself thing? into silent scope at launch. <laughs> and I came home and cracked that open and took it right back and got mad. And I was like, all right, this is a much better That's thing. what happened to me, too. I ended SSX. up settling on NHL, where yeah, I was like, yeah. all right, fine. I can play NHL. It's fine. That's so funny. Um, but it, I'm just... This goes back to I met a kid in Vegas um, when we were there for GameStop. We were talking to him, and he was the kid that during our panel was like, "I have money to burn," and I was like, <laughs> "So should it. I buy this?" And I'm like, "Save your money." When I was your age, because I was literally his age when the PS2 was out, I was like, "I spent all of my money on video games, all of it, you know." And I would leave a little bit to go to like a movie a week and be able to eat at the fucking food court, and then I would have no money until I got paid the next week. And I'm like, that is just stupid. If I could take 90% of the games in those fucking boxes in my mom's beach house and put them back and get that money back, I'd be rich. Yeah, you know but what I mean, and that's and that, that's, that's what got you here, though. Yeah, you that, know that what I mean? It's playing that's all those stupidity shitty games and that passion. And yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it's true, I guess. But I just I look back at those days where I was making, you know, fifteen thousand dollars a year, working a lot at like a deli or whatever. And I'm like, man, I really at 16 years old, 17 years old, when I had no expenses, my mom was paying for my cell phone. I didn't have rent or anything like that. I was like. I could have lived like a fucking king. I, I would have been like totally set, but instead I went like a beeline, like a fucking heat-seeking missile to Smith Haven Mall on Long Island every week with my f- stupid fucking friends, and we would spend hundreds of dollars on video games every week. And then I would go home and be like, I don't even know when I'm going to play these games. Yeah. And then and then I remember having my dad had this like shelf he made me, and I just had it was just lined with games. And I was just like, this is all of my, this is everything I own is right here. I even have like the shitty TV. I'm like, I'm focused on buying these this hardware and these games and I'm fucking focused and fixated on this. And I remember when I went to college, I had this those old DVD shelves that were like this thin but like vertical and it was just all PS2 games. And I was like, what the hell am I doing? And like there, <laughs> there came a point in time, it really was like 2004, which is the year I always talk about when I really stopped playing games for a year. Where I, I, it like it all collapsed. It wasn't even like it went down. It was just like everything just fucking fell out. And I was like, what am I doing? You know, like that was the year when I played Resident Evil 4 San Andreas, and I and that's basically it. Yeah, it's pretty and, much the end of the PS2. Yeah, and it, it was a weird like transition era, but the times before, and I was I was writing for IGN and stuff like that, so I would get games that way. But it was just like that was when I stopped really buying games conspicuously, and I was like, this is dumb. Like, I I was obsessed as we all were in the pre digital era with, and you still are with just having, having things. collecting. You yeah. want these? I things was like, there. well, my PS2 collection certainly can't be complete. Unless the bouncer's on there. Yeah. And my PS2 collection certainly can't be complete unless I go back and don't get the red version of, you know, uh, the fucking best oh, selling. Don't get me started, you know, and, and I'm Oh, like, my God. I hated that hits? shit. Fuck that shit. Yeah, ATV, whatever, off-road, whatever, fucking random games that I don't even understand why I ever bought. And I, and I would and I would like stare at my shelf and be like, oh, it's the red version. That's satisfaction. It, that satisfaction of having them there. I remember when I got the N sixty four and like that was my first Nintendo console that was like real. Like I bought SNES just to play Mario one time, but I had it and like I wouldn't. I kept the boxes in pristine condition and I'd slide them out and take the cartridges out and put them in and then put them back in and slide them. And I just had this like beautiful thing. I was like the TV. It was the shelf with all of the systems on it, and then on the bottom, I had underneath it the games lined up in like a perfect little brick array, all <laughs> labels thing, facing. Man. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, why, why, why was I buying these things? What was time. I doing? These so things? that's Mario Party, obsessed with Mario Party, cutting a hole in my hand playing Mario Party. <laughs> that's why I just bring this up. It's just uh, like, don't do that. Buy the games you want, like, because there are people that just buy games, yeah. and you see it on sometimes Facebook group, and just I know people like that. They just, yeah, they just buy games, and it's great. Buy buy as many games as you want, but don't do what I used to do. Or like a lot of other people maybe still do or used to do, which is like, just save your money, man. Yeah. Like buy a couple games a month, maybe. You don't need to be buying like, well, you don't have time. Yeah. I mean, it was funny. I thinking back for me, I never really, I was never, I never had that money. Like I went from not having money to once I had money, being a little bit more, you know, in the industry and stuff. So either I got stuff or I knew what games I was buying. I'm gonna buy those games. Yeah. You know, I'm buying Smash Bros. It's gonna fucking happen, you know. But I, I've never really been the type to just walk into a GameStop and be like. Oh, that looks kind of cool. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy that. You know, for me it was like when what was the killer to that was the rise, not the killer, of, mm-hmm. and I should say, but one of the things that was able to cut off the random buys and purchases and interest just on a box was when like Blockbuster got his shit together and had a great video game section and did yeah. Like I mean, the for me that was, what it was. And da, da, da. That's when we'd go in and just take a shot. Oh, well, I'm just anything. gonna random. This is when I'm gonna play all these games. Right, right, I, right, right. I was right. never gonna pay fifty dollars for a game I had no, knew nothing about. Yeah. But I remember being uh, in middle school and even high school reading these video game magazines and just looking into you know after June towards December, looking at that holiday and just being like, "Fuck, how am I gonna buy Metroid Prime Two 
and Need for Speed Underground, whatever, yeah. and Tony Hawk, and this, and that. Like, I'm not going to have this much money. Right. You know, I remember my friends discussing this, like, all right, you get these three. Yep. You get those th- four. Like, we'll combine. Have your mom buy me this for Christmas, and my mom will buy you that for Christmas. Oh, damn, and we'll your just trade, buying toys trade each with other? each other. Well, when you're close like that. Nice. We had a whole scheme going. It was, it okay, was good a, good, call. Good, a call. good system. But, man, yeah, to answer the question is, I think Lots. I've spent about... <laughs> 20 25,000 on games. I think you've spent a lot more than that. Maybe I don't even want to think about it. It's a yeah. terrible thing to think about. And then there was eBay. <laughs> and the, oh so my. you rebought all the games that you traded in for yeah, nothing. I used to I used to really I I'm telling you man, I used to I don't know what the fuck I was doing. <laughs> I really don't. I have no idea what the fuck I was doing. I was buying Genesis games. I was buying like N64 games. The when, collection. Yeah, yeah, like just like fill, like games that I was like, I'm never going to play this game. You know, I'm never. I don't know. <laughs> I I remember a lot of it was sparked because I found like eight copies of, of Castlevania Bloodlines at Toys R Us in 2000 that were sealed still yeah. on Genesis. And I was like, oh, and I am going to retire. Yeah. And I was and then but then like you go on there and you and you just I'm just you buying just buy it. And, and buy it's funny. My brother buy. is that person now. My brother is, you know, uh, you know, in his early 40s and he's a big gamer and, he, and he's a big retro gamer and he just buy so many fucking games See, that's like my nothing problem, even man. new just like he has like, like a famicom too. collection and a super famicom collection and nes that's nes all the atari and i'm like Gee. and he tells me he's like yeah i bought blah 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 this week and i'm like really it's like a lot of games dude <laughs> that's a lot dude you know, and and uh yeah so but then you see those pictures of those like you know guys that have like the collections and stuff on the wall and they make them look all nice and, like that looks awesome and you simultaneously go oh fuck i hope i never get there and God damn, that's he's the coolest dude in the fucking yeah, yeah, world. Yeah, like yeah. one day I hope I'm that guy. Yeah, it's like it's like feast or famine with that shit, man. Yeah. Shawshanker, Shawshanker says, Hey guys, what's your opinion on borrowing or lending video games to friends? I feel kind of dirty when I let a friend borrow a game knowing that they didn't pay money for it and that the company that made the great game didn't get a profit in the situation. However, most of the time I know that my friends wouldn't buy the game otherwise, so I feel like I owe it to the developers to let my friends experience their great work. Which is right. I mean nah, I don't think it's a moral conundrum, it's your game. Yeah. I think I always support. I always tell people to buy games new if they can, and to support the publishers and developers if they can to, to give them the financial incentive to do good things. But it's your game. It's the same thing as like saying like, uh, we the five of us are sitting in the living room and one of us is going to buy the movie on Amazon so we can all launch it. You know, like that's normal and I think yeah. fine. I don't. I don't necessarily think there's anything untoward. But it's about super it. rare too. You know what I mean? Like oh, what I rented Interstellar once and you and Cheryl watched it the next night. You know what I mean? Like. Game wise, doing it, I, I feel like usually it comes down to, especially if he's like, if his friends were like my friends in high school, right, that weren't into games like Poe or whatever. Like me lending him a game was that he's never gonna buy this game. You know what yeah. I mean? It's so like even nowadays that's the way it be. It's so rare. Somebody if they're looking through out there and like, oh man, I always wanted to try this. Can I try it? And like, yeah, go ahead. It's old. It's, yeah. it's not new. You know what I mean? If it's a, if it's you're passing around a game that is PS3 or PS4 launch era games, like. Well, it's one of those. Then you start having to wait. If you're really worried about the developer, it's more word of mouth, right? Another person has played this. They now know they, they, they know believe the in developer X. That, yeah, they're yeah. going to tweet about the, how much fun they're having. It's like exactly. Right. Yeah, I, I think it's a good thing. I mean, I think people experiencing the things that you like is important. It's no when, what. The, the, it's the it's not. I'm saying it's not the same as what we're always talking about of walking into GameStop and oh, for, I'm going to save the five bucks and buy this used copy of the game. Well, no, buy the new copy because you're already there. You're already in your head committed to buy this game. Like, why is it, yeah. you know, like here when it's just like, I want to try this. I wouldn't buy it any other way. Well, then, yeah, play it. I want mm-hmm. you to talk about it and be able to say something about it. Yeah, the only relevance to it is that I remember the, the Quantic Dream story from some years ago mm-hmm. when David Cage some, said something, and I, I think the numbers are right, but I, they could be off where he was saying, like, we sold 2 million copies of Heavy Rain, but 3 million trophies, like, trophy lists were activated. So, like, 50% of the people that played the game didn't even, or 33% of the people that played the game didn't even buy it. I'm like, yeah, that sucks when you look at that and you're the developer and you're like, well, we missed out on a million sales because of rentals or borrowing and all that stuff. And I'm like, ah. Yeah, that's it's, enough. It's, it's, that's, that's just the money. Like, yeah. And this sounds like some bullshit soul skater shit, but it's like money's one thing, but it's like if you're making this thing that you want people to enjoy, it's like for you know, looking at us as an example, it's like the people on Patreon that are paying for this content, that's fucking amazing and we love that. But then you look at YouTube, it's free. And it's like those numbers are just as valuable because we made something and people are enjoying it. Sure, you yeah. Know? But... Let's see. I want to. We went long on those, so I'm gonna yeah, have nice one more. Weird oh, that was you. I thought no, it was that was the dog. Patilla. I was like, yeah, I was damn, the dog's loud. I also like earlier when he came in, sneezed, sneezed, but it was just the most dramatic entrance he's ever made. Um, my favorite. The, the Portillo's never cuter than when he comes around and just jogs in. 
Because he just looks up at you and he just looks perfect. <laughs> it just looks perfect. You're a perfect boxcar dog, Boxcar 182 asks, and I think this is another cool question. It's a boxcar racer Blink 182 reference. It's yeah. got to be. Yeah. Don't you think? Or it's Boxcar Willie, his favorite country oh, musician. Probably not that one. With movies now having their own shared universe, do you guys think games could jump on this wagon as no. well? No. If so, what game worlds would you see? Would you love to see collide? It could be reasonable or wishful thinking. Well, Lego to mention. No. Um. See, I think the thing with this though is you need. I think reasonable is more fun to look at because wishful thinking. It's like, oh, let's just combine whatever the fuck we want. I think it's cool to actually look at the politics of, you know, developers and all that stuff and be like, oh, like the Square Enix universe could be a thing. Got you. You know. Okay. Okay. I'm with you now. Yeah, I, I think. Uh, I, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was okay. just gonna say I think that I I don't like the whole like universe sharing thing. I think it stifles people ultimately. It it, it oh, the more you go down that road, the more you're pigeonholed in the doing or saying or creating certain things that fit within the realm of this universe and to make sense in this universe. I wish people would just continue to make things that don't touch each other necessarily in terms of like plot or setting or whatever. It's not necessary. But what does it add? You know, if the last of us was a, pre- was a sequel to uncharted, for instance, like that's just like, what does that do? For See, either I don't know. Of those I games? love it. There's something about that. Like, even if it's like, I don't need it to be, you know, super forced and super like, you know, explained and stuff. But just, if, if those were in the same universe and it was just little mentions here and there, they might be. But like that type of thing, I love that. I think that's really cool. But for if, for them to like really kind of do the Marvel Universe type shit, where it's like every single thing is building up to this next stuff, that might be a little much. And uh, Assassin's Creed and Watch Dogs, I don't, I am not too familiar with those games. Yeah, there's like what something buried in. Uh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, there's a reference. Yeah. I can't. But that's cool. It, but I think so, that's yeah, yeah. really cool, and I think like that it type of cool, thing is interesting. Yeah, it is interesting. I mean, Uncharted Three has a reference to The Last of Us. If that that so, would be the, so it, it it does that would what, be awesome. If the end of Uncharted Four, like Nate and Elena are like whatever, huh, and it's like credits roll, and there's like one more scene of them flying back to the states, and they look out the window, and it's just pandemonium. Like, <laughs> what is happening? See, that mm. would be fucking great. Nah. Well, that'd be a re- but that'd be a really shitty end for Uncharted, and like no. that, yeah, that yeah, would yeah. Just feel like you're screwing over Uncharted. That's what it comes down to, right? Like. Theoretically, and this is before you said reasonable, my first thing I jumped to, right, was why can't Uncharted and Tomb Raider be in the same thing? You know what I mean? Same universe. No, that'd be cool. Because it does, and I'm not talking about a full fledged crossover, but I'm talking about like it would be as simple as like, you know, they, the, he's paging through notes and he sees Lara Croft's notes, or there is something, you know, her, her climbing spear is embedded in a wall when he wa- he's investing. Like, who, somebody was here not too long. Like, shit like that, I wouldn't mind, but I don't, it can't get to what we just said with Uncharted Last of Us, where, the Uncharted thing slams into Last of Us and they both explode. You know what I mean? Like, now it's like, oh, man, like, what a fucking See, horrible like, end like, for Uncharted. I like some of that. I think it could be could be cool. But I do think that there needs to be enough of each franchise to be its own thing. And then you can start, you know, sure. just to sh- change shit up. Like, Uncharted 4, okay, like, we've... We're, we've done enough. Sure. You know what I mean? Changing shit up. I mean, if you want or if you want to have it go that way... And when they, they fly in at the at post credit scene of Uncharted 4, they look out and like people are attacking each other however you want to start it, right? That's fine. As long as uh, Last of Us 2 is Nathan Drake, whatever it is, <laughs> 30 years, the 20, what is it? How much time has passed? 11, is it? What? The Sam, tw- from uh, the start of Last of Us to when we pick up with Ellie. Isn't it 20 years? Is it 20? Yeah. All right, so there you go. So Drake's going to be old. He's going to be sully. He's nah, going to be old it. as shit. But, that's like, yeah. fucking great. Now, right, that, I'm now I'm kind of sold I'm on it, too. Now I'm kinda now, the other thing for me that's obvious, and this is already kind of a thing, is Nintendo. Just have like a Nintendo universe. Yeah, but that doesn't count. Those are just I cartoons. I feel like they kind of do though too. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like they already kind of do with Smash Bros. But like I want to see it more. Like the fact that Mario Kart is only kind of dabbling in it. It's like it should just be Nintendo Kart. All this stuff should just be Nintendo this, Nintendo that, and whatever. Hmm. Um, but I, I think this is more of a fun question when it comes to story, and you know, instead of not just like Mario Kart or Smash. Sure. Bros. I mean, it's like a. Well, it doesn't count, I guess. I was gonna say Portal and Half Life, Half Life, like they're in the same world, yeah. like with Black Mesa and stuff. But I yeah. mean, that's not as like crazy. But I mean, that does count though. I mean, that's it is the same universe. Sure, sure, sure. Um, I mean, like you know, Square with all their games and they're talking about doing a movie universe. I guess it fits with the game too, technically. Yeah. The Western Square. Yeah, 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 yeah. Japan Square. I mean, Final Fantasy is already. See, the problem with games Weird. is that most, not every game, lots of games, they're, whatever you're overcoming is the end of the world or something. Like, uh, an existence so great, how do you wrap in something else and have that make sense? How do you put somebody else in the Persona universe other than other Persona characters? Yeah. Well, see, what's interesting about the end of the world stuff is that, I mean, if you beat the game, that means it didn't happen. Sure. So, But, like, Drake, but Drake's know. a great example. Uh, Uncharted is a great example of it happening in an island that, in Tomb Raider 2 where these things are happening and no one else would know about yeah. it. But, like, Dead Rising can't. 
we can't say Dead Rising's part of this or Resident Evil's part of this. You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there has to be these little things that are pocketed. And when you're just putting together pocketed things, what are the crossover opportunities? Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that has been episode 39 of the Kind of Funny Games cast. This topic is brought to you by DraftKings. Put your fantasy skills to the test starting Sunday at DraftKings.com, America's favorite one-week fantasy football site where you can kick off the season by winning $2 million. It's the biggest fantasy football contest ever. $10 million in prizes are up for grabs, including $2 million for first place and $1 million for second. One-week fantasy means no season-long commitments. It's fantasy football on demand. Play where you want, when you want, with the players that you want. This isn't fantasy as usual. This is DraftKings. Welcome to the Big Ten. Time. Hurry to DraftKings.com and use promo code Kind of Funny to play for free for a shot at part of $10 million in Sunday's Millionaire Maker event. And enter Kind of Funny for free entry now only at DraftKings.com. That's DraftKings.com. Thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. In honor of that, DraftKings. Yeah. Uh, is that why you wore your high school uh-huh. football coach? Uh, little jacket. league, little yeah, league yeah, coach? Yeah. 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 <laughs> I like this jacket. I like it I too. like this jacket. A I lot. like it. I'm just saying that it's Haters that funny. They are going to hate. They are going right. to hate. Hate, hate. I'll see you guys next week, and I love you all. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Love you.